All right, good evening everyone. Welcome back to Compound Interesting. This is Emil and in today's video, we're gonna have a look at PacBio or Pacific Bioscience Company, ticker simple PACB. And um, this recently became ARK Invest's number one holding in their ARK Genomic Fund. But since it was last week, it was number one. And since then it's actually dropped. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you might have seen that I've talked a bit about gene editing companies such as CRISPR, mostly just CRISPR actually. So this is, this is a gene sequencing company. So this PacBio is a gene sequencing company while CRISPR is a gene editing company. So they're not exactly competitors, but they're in the same, very similar fields. So gene editing is where you go in and actually edit out a gene. And this has enormous implications for the future. So gene editing is exactly what it says on the tin. You can go in and actually edit someone's genes. So you can make them immune to certain diseases or resistant to diseases or in far down the future, you can change their eye colors, make them smart, make them tall, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see the implications for gene editing are absolutely enormous. They can eradicate an enormous amount of genetic diseases. So I've talked about that in other videos. I'll link those up there. I highly recommend you check them out if you want a deeper understanding of gene editing, because gene editing, like you can even make cattle grow more muscle, which would reduce the amount of impact on the environment that cattle raising has. As well, it can make crops more resistant to drought or make them produce more yield for per square foot. So enormous implications for gene editing. Gene sequencing is a little bit different. So instead of actually editing the gene, all you're doing with gene sequencing is actually just reading the gene. And why is that useful? Why is gene sequencing useful? So gene sequencing is kind of required if you want to learn about genes. So gene editing would require gene sequencing. So it would require people to be able to sequence the genes and with gene sequencing, you can find out exactly where, say, a disease lies within that gene or where there's a mutation that is causing a problem within someone. So gene sequencing is really useful for diagnosing rare diseases or all diseases for that matter, but particularly rare diseases, really, really useful. And gene sequencing is already has a, a pretty large market already, unlike gene editing, which hasn't really taken off yet. And the fact that no one's really doing gene editing yet because it's only in its infancy, it's not really taken off, it's not really FDA approved, it's only just in testing and clinical trial stage. However, gene sequencing is well and truly a large market. We can see that with Illumina. This is a company I passed up on a few months ago, like maybe eight months ago, I first looked into Illumina. Illumina I'll link that up there. But Illumina, I'm glad I didn't actually invest it in the end because it hasn't really gone anywhere. But Illumina has massive revenues and already has a massive market cap. So they're already making a lot of sales. So there's a demand for gene sequencing. But PacBio have discovered, have come up with a better way potentially for gene sequencing. And the, it's, it's more accurate. So Illumina uses short read sequencing, meaning that they just take very short strands of the DNA and compile them all together to get the entire DNA sequenced to basically read the entire DNA. So I'm not going to get too in the weeds of the differences on a technical level, how these two companies operate. But we can see from test results that PacBio, Pacific Biosciences, has a more accurate read. And right now, there's a big price disparity. So Illumin is much cheaper still than PacBio. However, PacBio's price to sequence a genome is falling and falling and falling. So PacBio aren't really making very much in revenues, making it a little bit, but not, not a lot. But once in a few years, once it reaches parity with Illumina's short read sequencing. So Illumina does short read sequencing, so they just continually put the DNA strand through a circular machine and keep reading it until they've sequenced the whole biome, which isn't as accurate as PacBio, which has come up with a new way called hi-fi sequencing, which is more accurate and you can, it's, a, it's long read sequencing. So it's reading the whole DNA strand or long parts of the DNA strand all in one go and they've worked out a way to make it highly, highly accurate. So if this hi-fi method from PacBio is more accurate and easier and cheaper, eventually it will become faster, cheaper, stronger, etc. than Illumina's method. And once the price comes to parity, then people might start going to PacBio instead of Illumina. And we could see now Illumina has 80% plus of the market share of gene sequencing, but who knows where PacBio could, could come. But if PacBio is a cheaper, faster, better way to sequence a genome than Illumina, then Illumina is in big trouble and PacBio could eventually take a lot of their market share. And they have one tenth of the market cap of Illumina now. So we could see that 
there is that enormous opportunity for PacBio to explode in growth over the next five or so years. But at the same time, PacBio has already been on an enormous run and it's up well over 10x from its lows this year and it has a really high price to sales ratio so this isn't a sure bet at all this is still a, a speculative risky bet they're not making much money now so you're kind of hoping that in the future th that Illuma doesn't come up with a new solution that's even better again or and PacBio can really bring the cost down and make it cost parity to Illumina's method of gene sequencing. I would also add that the total market for gene sequencing, that's not, it's not at its cap now. It's a growing market, significantly growing market because the prices keep falling. So I'll show you in this graph, like it used to be like a billion dollars to, to sequence an entire human genome. And now it's a hundred dollars with Illumina. So eventually PacBio can get their prices down to a hundred dollars as well. It'll probably keep falling further and further. So the cheaper it gets, the more useful it becomes because you can just sequence a genome for anyone who comes into a doctor's office eventually and can immediately find out everything that they might be susceptible to, any diseases that they might be more susceptible to or diseases that they might actually have or things they might be allergic to. Like the list goes on. So the lower the price comes, the more gene sequencing will actually be used and the entire market for gene sequencing is set to continue. So like, I don't think Illumina is going anywhere. Like if you hold Illumina, I wouldn't be crazy worried, but maybe just be aware that there's other competitors. Competition is extremely fierce in this market. So just keep that in mind. But we can see PacBio has gone up like a rocket ship this year. So I'd be very, very careful. They have a price to sales ratio of over 90. So that's a really, really high price to sales ratio. So yeah, like I said, you have to wait for them to start. They're not really, their revenues haven't really kick-started yet so just be careful this is a, a highly speculative company and you're kind of getting it when it's going on a, a serious ride so like I think the entire start, stock market is kind of starting to enter enter a little bit of a, a bubble stage where like everyone's making money TikTok investors are coming in and making fortunes and they're like they're offering amazing advice like this So yeah, I, I think the stock market might be a little bit overvalued. So it's very hard to find deals, particularly in these kind of speculative companies. So I would just offer you or I would just warn you to be a little bit cautious. But I'm just saying be cautious. I'm not saying go panic and sell all your stocks. Like a, a stock market bubble can be way, way more bubbly than this. So don't be panicking or anything. I'm just, I'm, I'm finding it hard to find any deals in the stock market personally. So over the last few months, I haven't been putting a lot of money in the stock market kind of be putting all my money into cryptocurrencies and particularly Bitcoin. So maybe if you're interested in that, you can see my videos on that. So the couple of things I don't like about PacBio is ARK Invest. It was number one in ARK Invest's fund, but um, ARK Invest stopped buying more shares in December. So you can see in this photo that they've been buying more and more shares. And then in December, December they stopped buying it after it's gone on like now it's on a crazy, crazy price. Uh, ARK Invest have stopped buying it and they've recently started to actually sell some shares in January. So they started trimming their position. Now that doesn't mean that they don't believe in this company anymore. It doesn't mean that it's overvalued necessarily. All it means is just that ARK Invest can never have a company that makes up more than 10% of their funds. So if a company starts getting to that 10% uh, mark, they have to sell shares that's written into their rules. So anytime a company starts to be more than 10% of their fund, they have to sell shares so they had to do that with tesla numerous times because tesla kept kept going up becoming 10 percent, and they kept having to sell shares the whole way up which is a bit of a shame because they would have their fund would have went way higher if they didn't have to sell all those tesla shares on its way up on its meteor meteoric rise but yeah like i said it was number one and now it's number three and now we have what well, teledoc is number one and twist biosciences is number two so I'm always looking into ARK Invest and seeing what they're investing into just to 
get some inspiration. So what I, out of this list, what companies would you like me to talk about next? Maybe I could do a video on Teladoc or Twist. I don't know much about them at the moment. But PacBio really interested me originally because I heard about the difference between long read and short read sequencing and how PacBio had this new way to do it that was potentially better. So with speculative companies like this that aren't really based, their valuations aren't really based on their revenues now or their reven revenues this year, you're kind of looking out way into the future on what their potentiality, potentiality could be. So these are always kind of speculative, hard to value companies. So another example would be Lemonade or Virgin Galactic. These companies, like they're not making money right now. You're only kind of imagining how much money they can make in the future. So with a company like that, you have to look at their total addressable market in the future. And so that's how much money they can potentially make in the future, like out of everything that they could make. So they have in their, the other thing I didn't like was in their, uh, investors presentation which I'll link in the description hopefully I remember uh, but they have their total addressable market for 2025 at are only like 5 billion which it, their market cap is already 7 billion so it's not really an enormous total addressable market that they think they're going into which is kind of surprising when I factor in that Illumina's uh, revenue is much higher than 5 billion so I don't know where they're getting that 5 billion total addressable market from but yeah, definitely not the most encouraging sign investing into a company that's already larger than its total addressable market. But their balance sheet is okay. It's about like one and one uh, cash to liabilities and they can always, they have an enormous valuation now. They don't spend like anywhere near their, they don't spend enormous amounts of money compared to their market cap, which means they can snap their fingers, issue some more shares and have more cash on their balance sheet at any space, at, at any time they want with very little dilution to shareholders because they have such a sky high valuation. They can just raise cash like that and use that to fund new projects, etc. So I'm not too worried about their balance sheet right now if their market cap stays at these kind of higher levels. It's not, it's not too worrying. Their revenue growth and revenue over the last couple of years is going to be an up and down. And there's definitely a, a, a decline since in 2020 because of the Roni Rona, like, so that's kind of fair enough. But next quarter, they're supposed to grow 40% revenue from Q, uh, Q3 to Q4. So that's obviously really, really fast growth, but it's still not very much revenue. So it's not really that, it's not really worth paying attention to too much. Like you're not looking at the revenue growth. You shouldn't really be looking at the earnings because they're, they're free cash flow positive. So they're not burning through money uh, in crazy speeds. So Basically, if you're investing into this, you're investing into a speculative company now and that hopefully can grow into something like Illumina is in the future. But for me, this is a little bit too speculative. It's gone up so much already. So although I, I'm really interested in the idea of this company and what they're doing, for me at these prices, it's not attractive enough for me to invest. So I'm gonna take that money that I was thinking of investing in PacBio and I'm gonna invest it in ArcG again. So that's why I've done a couple of times instead of trying to pick the winners. Uh, I, I do like CRISPR. I think CRISPR is going well. So I've invested quite a lot of money in CRISPR and I'm also investing in ARCG because I think ARC are better at choosing these the stocks in these industries than potentially I am. But I'm looking, I'm learning a lot more about this industry and will keep on sharing my information about this industry with you guys. So that's all I wanted to say about Pacific Biosciences. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped and kind of shed some light on whether or not you want to invest in this company. For me, I'm just going to be adding to my ArcG position. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. So how do we make money from home? For starters, this is not a sponsored video. We just get this question all the time. And honestly, the answer is really simple. So basically, I just trade stocks on an app called Robinhood, which I left a link in our bio if you want to check it out. It's free to download, free to sign up. They actually give you a free stock, so they're paying you to sign up. Um, but again, not sponsored. And I know trading sounds intimidating. Here's my strategy in a nutshell. I see a stock going up and I buy it. And I just watch it until it stops going up and then I sell it and I do that over and over and it pays for our whole lifestyle. Um, if you're wondering how much you can make doing this, in this month I turned about 400 into 14,000.
And in this month, I turned less than 1000 into 20000 And honestly, my favorite part about this isn't even the amount of money you can make, but just the fact that we don't have to go to a 9-to-5 job. Yeah, we can focus on things that we actually enjoy doing. So if you have friends that like want to make money from home, you can tag them or send them a link. Or if you make money this way, share it in the comments so other people know Like, there's more people doing this now.